assalamu alaikum today's topic will be osteoarthritis that means anatomically we'll be looking at the knee joint the clinical presentation is a senior individual presents with pain that starts around the knee joint but can radiate towards his shin and foot and this pain is more during movement and walking in fact the pain causes limitation of the movement or there is joint stiffness furthermore on examination you notice a bony crepitus within the knee joint as the patient moves the knee you hear the bubble popping sounds the patient themselves describe a gritty sensation when they're moving their knee joint and usually in the history there is a traumatic cause sometimes the person undergoes some some accident or direct injury and the symptoms start happening after that now osteoarthritis by definition is the inflammation of the articular cartilage surrounding a synovial joint the osteoarthritis of the knee which is the most commonly uh, recognizable case is shown in front of you you can see the femur bone on top the tibia at the bottom and notice that the fibula has no part in this because while it is adjacent to the knee joint it is not forming an articulation with any of the bones of the two bones it's only basically adjacent to the tibia bone the actual knee joint is between the femur and the tibia and here we can see the articular cartilage which is really high line cartilage lining these two bones now the inflammation actually causes erosion of this and without this obviously the purpose of articular cartilage is to reduce friction and protect the joints from shocks and traumas in their absence then obviously there is pain and tenderness and not all osteoarthritis come with inflammation not all the knee joints are hot but some of them are and very interestingly if a person is symptomatic it's not necessary that those signs of osteoarthritis are visible on x-ray conversely if the signs are visible on x-ray it's not necessary that the person has a symptom so it becomes very difficult to diagnose this case Here we have a plain x-ray frontal view of the knee joint and uh, this is the left knee joint because we can tell the fibula is on lateral side tibia is on the medial side the three signs that must be present on an x-ray for a diagnosis of osteoarthritis includes number 1 joint space narrowing compare the two sides over here notice how this side is completely narrow and this side is more normal In fact the narrowing is what causes a varus deformity. We'll get to that point later. So one is the joint space narrowing. The second is the osteocyte formation. If you see over here you can see a, a bony spur. Although it is bony but it's actually coming from the synovial membrane, the meniscus is here and the articular cartilage. This one is from the articular cartilage. This is very characteristically seen in the osteoarthritis. Here you can see another one at this area. The third sign is the subchondral sclerosis. Now, if you are observant, you may have noticed that the edges of the bone they are highly bright, shining almost. Look how this line is shining here, and this line. This is subchondral sclerosis. As compared to this sign, it's quite dim. Subchondral sclerosis is the thickening of the bone. So when you have all these three signs, then you can suspect uh, this is osteoarthritis. Looking at from the side, once again. we can see the femur up here the two condyles of the femur bone the patella the tibia is right over here and even we can see the tibial tuberosity very nicely here fibula on the other end here look and look see the edges they are highly bright and thick subchondral sclerosis here are the osteophytes coming out and obviously from this end on the back end there is this uh, joint space narrowing so this is how characteristically osteoarthritis appears on x-ray ultrasound is not normally done mri can give more details but usually osteoarthritis can be picked up on x-ray as far as the knee joint is concerned here is a histological slide of the articular cartilage surrounding the knee joint you can see the bony part here this is the bone of the tibia right down here and uh, on top of that we have the articular cartilage and this is basically this uh, highland cartilage covering that so let us zoom in on this here we go 
Now, here we can see how the articular cartilage is covering the joint. And furthermore, you can see the ground glass appearance that is characteristic of the hyaline cartilage. Zooming in further, we can see the lacunae present here with along with the uh, cells in them. So this is hyaline cartilage, but compared to the hyaline cartilage found normally elsewhere, this one does not have a perichondrium covering. Obviously it doesn't need because it's within the joint space. So this is how it appears histologically. Now in osteoarthritis, there will be a major defects on portion of this. But obviously slides will only be taken from the corpses and uh, normally the slides are not taken from the live patients. A biopsy has no value in this. But otherwise, this is how articular cartilage appears in the knee joint. One thing I want to point out is the growth plate that is very nicely visible here between the articular cartilage and the bone down below. You can see that uh, this growth plate also has its own cartilage present here. Here is the resting zone. Then we have the proliferating zone. You can see columns of cells over here. And down below is the hypertrophic zone, which is now becoming the bony part. And this growth plate is the thing that is responsible for increasing the length of our bones. Damage to this can actually cause uh, severe complications and failure of growth. So this thing is really active in the adult life, as uh, in the youth actually, up until the bones ossify.